Today we're talking about... Wait, what, what just happened? I said, today we're... You gotta be kidding me. Am I not even allowed to call it by its name? Even though the news is talking about it constantly? Fine. We'll just have to use our imagination. Today's episode is inspired by the most viral topic that's sweeping the globe in 2020. You could say that this topic is infectious. You woo won't believe your ears when you hear the conclusion of this episode. Today we're talking about which video game character is least likely to survive a viral outbreak. A purely hypothetical, totally not inspired by real life events global pandemic. A topic that just randomly popped into my head at the top of 2020 and I wanted to cover completely unrelated to anything else happening in the real world. How was that? Am I good? Oy vey, YouTubing in 2020 is hard. Roll intro! Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where, just a quick promo here at the top, we have ourselves a cool new pullover hoodie with a really awesome Japanese-inspired design. The text on the sleeve reads Game Theory, and the chest is, but hey, that's just a theory, a game theory. Or, at least, I think that's what it says. We had two translators double check it independently of each other, so either it's right, or this is the most well-coordinated prank ever and it actually reads udon noodles are delicious. Either way, I really love the design. I hope you do too. It's only available for the next 10 days, so if you're interested, check it out in the merch shelf down below. Anyway, spring is upon us, love is in the air, and so is a certain airborne virus that shall not be named. And maybe I'm just getting a little stir-crazy this winter. Maybe I'm just sick of how serious things in the world have been lately. Maybe I just want to go back to the over-the-top ridiculous theories that this channel was built on, but whatever the reason, today's episode is dumb. Capital I-Z-D-U-M, dumb. Just super stupid topic, ridiculous, extraneous, dumb, dumb, silly willy, but you know what? It's fun, so there's that. The question I'm looking at today, if you're willing to indulge me for the next 15 minutes or so, is which video game character would be most likely to die from a global pandemic? If a hypothetical illness vaguely approximating the behavior of virus that shall not be named were to start spreading spreading through the connected universe of all video games, since, as we all know at this point, all video games are connected, who would be the first to kick the bucket? Who is our patient zero? I'm also gonna answer who has the best chance of living, but, you know, that's significantly less fun. So, that's it. No more cringy introduction required. If you're looking for tips on how to survive the hottest viral virus, or you're just looking to pass the time while you're stuck in quarantine, well then, this episode is for you. And nothing is stopping me from doing it. Except for maybe some virulent airborne particles. First things first, in order to know who's gonna get infected, we need to know how a hypothetical global pandemic like this would work. Viruses are small particles of genetic material that are surrounded by a protein coat. Some viruses also have a fatty envelope covering. Ooh, I love that coat on you. Why, oh, that is so sweet. Thank you. It's protein. <laughs> <laughs> you are my friend. Viruses are incapable of reproducing on their own, and as such, they violently infect host cells for their own survival. If we were to model our fictional virus after recent ones that have appeared in the news, it would be spread via small respiratory droplets, the type that escape when you're coughing or sneezing. No big shock there, it's pretty commonplace for most viral infections. Nothing spreads sickness quite like a big old globule of sneeze directed at your face. I mean, I'm not even sick, and just seeing the animation that we just made to demonstrate that last sentence made me feel a bit ill. But when it comes to outbreaks, the big biggest variable is airborne transmission. You see, what's made big viral outbreaks of the past so dangerous was in large part because of how far they're able to spread through the air. Measles, for instance, could spread at distances as great as 30 meters. That's nearly 100 feet! For more recent viral outbreaks appearing in the headlines, the range is much more limited. UC San Francisco infectious disease expert Charles Chu makes it clear that viruses like the virus that shall not be named require direct contact. Quote from him, if you have an infected person in the front of the plane, for instance, and you're in the back of the plane, your risk is close to zero, simply because the area of exposure is thought to be roughly six feet from the infected person." End quote. Now, this is great news if you're the guy in the back row of the plane. Sure, you might not be able to lean your seat back, in which case you're gonna go viral for other reasons because you resort to punching the seat of the woman in front of you when she reclines, but on the plus side, you're less likely to contract the hottest infection since bird flu. So let's assume that that's how our hypothetical video game virus spreads, either direct contact 
contact or within a six foot radius. Now, let's talk about counteracting that spread. One, you could just avoid people altogether, can't get infected by other people if you're never around other people. And that, my friends, is why gamers will end up being the master race. Ah, the perks of being forever alone. But eventually, you're gonna have to venture out into the world, which leads us to option number two, face masks. Now, when I say face mask, you might think of a surgical mask like this, or the ones that you see everyone wearing around Japan. Fashionable and hygienic, except they're not. You see, it turns out that surgical masks are completely ineffective against viruses because viruses are too small, and so they can easily pass through the mask. To quote from the Center for Disease Control, or CDC, a surgical mask, quote, does not provide the wearer with a reliable level of protection from inhaling smaller airborne particles, and is not considered respiratory protection. Leakage occurs around the edge of the mask when the user inhales, end quote. See, what the CDC wants you to wear are masks like the N95 respirator. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite face mask on the Citadel. These sorts of masks are more akin to what you might see a house painter wear. That's because the N95 respirator can be molded to fit tightly against the contours of your face, forming a tight seal so the virus can't creep around the edges and into your nose or mouth. The CDC explains that the N95 respirator, quote, filters out at least 95% of airborne particles. When properly fitted and donned, minimal leakage occurs around the edges of the respirator when the user inhales. Which brings us to the topic of facial hair. You heard that right, my friends. Those little flavor savers under your nose are one of the key deciding factors for who will and who won't be surviving our little global health emergency. Because here's the thing, if you have any facial hair dancing across the seal line for the mask, it renders the respirator ineffective. It's the exact same reason why I, now that I have this incredible, luxurious beard, can no longer vacuum seal cups to my face just by sucking out all the air, which you might not think is all that big of a deal, but to be honest, I do a lot of my best thinking with a cup suctioned to my face. Hashtag first beard problems. In fact, when it comes to virus prevention, this is such a serious consideration in virus control that the CDC started going viral themselves on Twitter when they started sending this infographic around detailing which facial hairstyles are most likely to get you infected. Seriously, look at this chart. It's so ridiculous. What's with some of the names that they're using? I mean, the toothbrush mustache? Yeah, everybody I know calls it the toothbrush mustache. There's absolutely no historical figure that comes to mind when a person sees this kind of mustache. Absolutely no person alive or dead associated with this mustache that would keep me from rocking this sort of thing in public right now. Anyway, my wife Stephanie sent this to me the other day, partly because she cares about my well-being, but mostly because she wants me to lose the Matt Daddy beard. And can I just add a quick side note here for a second? Ever since I grew the beard, everywhere I go, people won't stop calling me Matt Daddy. Guys, please stop. Do not call me Matt Daddy. And whatever you do, do not make hashtag Matt Daddy trend, okay? I repeat, I totally do not want Matt Daddy to become a thing. It would be awful if that nickname were to stick for me, okay? So again, just a public service announcement, Matt Daddy, not a thing. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Long story short, certain styles of facial hair are keeping you healthier than others. So basically, this character from the game Ninja Town, which is literally just a mustache with a mustache, yeah, he's totally forked. Okay, so facial hair breaks the mask's airtight seal and greatly increases risk of infection. Simple enough. Now comes the question of what hairstyles are putting people into the danger zone. Let's go back to the infographic. No offense to the CDC, thank you for everything that you do, but you basically opted to use the default male me for every single hair style. Variety is the spice of life, people. What good is living through a global health crisis if you don't have anything to live for? But looking at the chart, it becomes immediately clear that if this were a real disease, which it clearly is not, it would practically wipe out every major YouTube gamer. I mean, at this point, having some scruff on your face is almost as requisite as having a giant wall of sound paneling behind you. Or, at the very least, a display of every video game you have ever purchased ever. This proves that I am a serious gamer, lol. But again, I digress. Focus, Matt. We're talking about what fictional video game characters live and die. So let's settle it right here, right now. Which video game character makes it through this epidemic, and which ones go the way of the Wii U? Right off the bat, we know that clean-shaven characters are gonna get themselves good results. Link is sitting pretty, Zelda is sitting pretty, Agent 47 from Hitman looking clean as always, and same goes for Duke Nukem. Now, at a glance, you might think that Kirby's safe, but there are two problems. First, his eyes and mouth are so close together that the respirator ceiling surface passes across his eyeballs, assuming Kirby's gonna wanna blink on occasion that's gonna break the seal. Secondly, Kirby's mouth can of course stretch way outside the boundaries of the mask. Hate to say it, but Kirby could be in mortal danger. Now then, what about the video game characters who aren't clean shaven? Basically, if your mustache doesn't stray too far away from your mouth, it's not gonna interfere with the respirator ceiling surface. Bodes well for the likes of Mike Hagar, Mustache Era, Solid Snake, and even Mecha Hitler from Wolfenstein. I wonder if he called it a toothbrush.
plush mustache. Mario, however, isn't looking quite so super all of a sudden. His mustache might be a bit too big, but you know, he's got options. Option A, tucking his mustache so it doesn't cross the respirator ceiling surface, or option B, make shaved Mario a reality. Oh God, put it back. Yeah, I think we can all agree that we're rooting for option A, or for Mario to just die. It also means that even more mustachioed men are in the danger zone. Dr. Eggman, Wario, and Master Onion from Parappa the Rappa, all in the red. Similarly, full beards are a one-way ticket to Virus Town. Kratos might want to stick with the safer, young Kratos look. Same goes for Geralt in Witcher 3. Stubble breaks the respirator seal just like a beard does, which means that that whole dynamic beard growth feature ain't gonna be so great amid a global health crisis. Forget tossing a coin to your Witcher, just toss and a razor instead. Anyway, I could list these characters off for hours. If only there was a more efficient way to present such a staggering amount of data, like, I don't know, an infographic. Great idea, me! Here it is, folks, the Game Theorist's infographic on face mask friendly hairstyles. I took the CDC's information and put it into terms us gamers can understand. But let's keep in mind here, this face mask infographic doesn't tell us the whole story. Remember, viruses like this don't just spread through airborne particles, they spread through direct contact as well. That means that personal hygiene, especially washing your hands, is gonna protect you more than any loose-fitting surgical mask ever will. Furthermore, just because someone contracts a virus, it doesn't mean that they're gonna die from it. And here comes the tough discussion. At this point, you've undoubtedly heard talk of how deadly certain viruses can be. The fact of the matter is that death tolls from around the globe make for great grabby headlines, traditional media's equivalent of clickbait. But let's pull out and look at the real statistics here. The media tends to overinflate the news, scare tactics, leave out things that skew how we process the information that they're giving us. Overall, China's CDC found that 2.3% of confirmed cases of recent unnameable diseases died, which puts it deadlier than the flu, but it also puts it below things like 2,000 2003's SARS outbreak. The SARS outbreak in 2003 had a death rate of 9.6%, but even the 2.3% chance of recent diseases is still a misleading number. You see, the Chinese CDC found that the fatality rate was 14.8% in people 80 or older, likely reflecting the presence of other diseases, a weaker immune system, or simply worse health overall. By contrast, the fatality rate was 1.3% in 50-somethings, 0.4% in 40-somethings, and 0.2% in people 10 to 39. The twist of this episode today is that most, if not all, the video game characters listed in this infographic we created would likely survive a hypothetical viral infection like the one that we're talking about today. They're all generally young and healthy, and sure, if they contract the virus, they're gonna have themselves a heck of a miserable two-week period, but there's a high likelihood, high likelihood, over 90%, that they're gonna bounce back on the other end. So even though someone might have dangerous facial hair, there are a lot of other non-facial hair factors too. And we need to take those factors into consideration because let's be honest here, we don't really care which video game characters make a face mask seal the best. We want to know who's gonna die. Am I right? So let's first establish who is definitely not gonna succumb to our pandemic. Based on the factors we discussed earlier, the character best poised to survive this epidemic is young, clean shaven, has good hygiene, and doesn't come into contact with a whole lot of people. Our ultimate virus survivor is, drum roll please, <laughs> Princess Peach. Yes! First of all, she spends huge swaths of her time isolated in one castle or another, meaning she's not coming into contact with many carriers of the virus. Though we'd never ask a lady her age, she does seem to be well under the age of 40, which is where susceptibility to viruses begin to rise. Obviously, Princess Peach has no facial hair, or at the very least is shaving it off on a regular basis, but on top of it all, Princess Peach basically wears gloves all the time, meaning that her hands aren't coming into contact with anything hazardous. Long story short, a relative loner trap in a castle with no facial hair and protective gloves, definitely gonna be our best candidate for surviving the worst and Mario remake the world after the bacteriophages settle. But now let's consider which character is most likely to die. Basically, we're looking for the polar opposite of Peach. Elderly, very hairy, poor hygiene, and perhaps most importantly, comes into contact with a lot of people. With those factors in mind, I humbly give you, for not all that much longer, Cranky Kong, the original Donkey Kong from the arcade cabinets. This guy checks all 
the bad boxes. Elderly, big check. Facial hair that won't fit under a mask, check and check. Heck, this guy's entire face is hair. Poor hygiene? I mean, the guy runs around barefoot in the jungle all day, eating bananas straight off the ground and throwing his dentures at complete strangers. And despite living in the middle of a jungle, Cranky Kong gets out quite a bit for his age. Comes into contact with a lot of different people. Recently, he's been running around putting his immune system at risk in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Never mind the fact that he's been kicking it with the Super Smash Brothers crowd. Super Smash Brothers is, of course, basically the CDC's worst nightmare, by the way. It's like one big petri dish of disease if you think about it. Characters from every universe imaginable converging to participate in close quarters hand-to-hand -hand combat. I mean, most fighters are young and strong enough to survive the virus if they happen to contract it, but Cranky Kong is an elderly and feeble exception. This old boy's body needs to be ready to fight off viral infection if it can, but Cranky Kong is not slowing down. If anything, it seems like he's been putting himself even more at risk in recent years. And that could very well catch up to him if the virus that shall not be named ever makes it to Donkey Kong's country. So there you have it, my friends. If anyone's gonna succumb to the epidemic, it's Cranky Kong. But while we're on the subject of protecting yourself from viral outbreaks, let's transition over to talking about our sponsor for today's episode, NordVPN. Because guess what? Biological viruses aren't the only ones that you have to be defending against. In fact, the most aggressive viral attacks are coming over your computer. And Nord isn't just about protection. With NordVPN, you suddenly unlock a truly global internet for yourself. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know how Netflix has different content available depending on what part of the globe you're in? With Nord, those regional distinctions disappear. Because with one touch, suddenly your internet can seem like it's coming from anywhere in the world. Let's say, for instance, the UK. And that, in turn, gets you access to stuff that you can't get access to in the US. New weekly episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race? Huh, good luck trying to watch that show in the US. I have almost every streaming service currently available and I still can't watch it. But with Nord, I can. It's available on Netflix. Same story with the Breaking Bad sequel, Better Call Saul. Sure, US Netflix says that it has the new episodes, but those are just the new episodes for Netflix from last season. To get the really new episodes that are airing each and every week as they're airing, you flip it over to the UK with one click and boom, suddenly my internet looks like it's coming from overseas. Even new movies that you really should see like Uncut Gems. It's a great film that unfortunately got snubbed by the Oscars and you can see everything that the Oscars miss because it's available on Netflix only if you have a VPN to flip it over to the UK. And sure, I'm using the UK as my personal example here, but Nord has thousands of servers across 60 plus countries. So if you're stuck in quarantine zones or you're not leaving the house for fear of viruses, Nord is not only there to protect you, Nord is also there to entertain you. Go to nordvpn.com slash matpat, M-A-T-P-A-T, and use the code matpat to get 70% off a three-year plan plus an additional one month for free. That's nordvpn.com slash matpat. Three years of protection and entertainment for a low, low price. Link is, well, you know, down in the description below. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I have a new episode of RuPaul to watch. So in the meantime, remember, that's just a theory. A game theory. Stay safe out there, and thanks for watching.